Let's introduce one more probability density curve called the normal distribution. The normal distribution doesn't maybe look like much. It's this complicated looking exponential thing. And the mean and the standard deviation appear directly in the formula. So there's no question about trying to figure out what they are in this case. If you graph P of X, with some value of sigma and mu, you get a curve that looks like that. So this is always positive, but it approaches these asymptotes quite quickly. And this value here is the mean. For a long time, statisticians and social scientists were just obsessed with the normal distribution. There was this idea that data should, in some prescriptive sense, look like this curve. And if something doesn't follow the normal distribution, it's somehow a problem. Like that's where the idea of curving tests comes from. The idea that if we treat student grades as a random process, the grades should look like this. And if they don't, you're doing something wrong and need to correct it. That kind of prescriptivism is no longer in favor. But even so, the normal distribution does genuinely appear in many important applications. For our purposes, the things we can actually do with this distribution are pretty limited. In particular, this P of X does not have an elementary antiderivative. So you are not going to be able to compute by hand the probability that a random variable lies in a given interval. What we have instead is a three frequently memorized percentages. So you select a number at random using this probability distribution. Where is the number going to be? Well, this is a probability distribution on the entire real number line. So theoretically, this number could be anywhere. In practice, it's going to be fairly close to the mean. It's very unlikely that we get a number way over here 
we're way over here. And in particular, let's say you look at the region that is one standard deviation away from the mean. So this is the mean plus a standard deviation. This is the mean minus a standard deviation. Then if you pick a number at random, it is 68% likely. Not exactly that. This is an infinite non-repeating decimal, but close enough to 68% likely that you're in this interval. If you go up to two standard deviations away, it's 95% likely. And if you go up to three standard deviations away, it's 99.9% likely that you'll wind up in this interval. So that helps resolve a bit of a dichotomy. This distribution is on the entire real number line. I said it has a lot of real world applications, but very frequently in the real world, X has to be a positive number. Like if X is the time it takes for something to happen, or X is a blood pressure, or X is whatever, most real world values have to be positive. So how can we have a distribution on the entire real number line? And the answer is that by the time you get to the negative numbers, it's so unlikely that a randomly selected real number is negative, that the probability might as well be zero. Like 0 0.00000001 or something. And okay, that's not actually going to happen. So, that is our crash introduction to the normal distribution. Obviously very brief, but we have entire probability and statistics courses. And this one section of calculus was never um, never intended to replace those. So you'll see this in more detail later in your mathematical career.